works. Fantastic. So, um, my name is Mohan Skabikson, um, and uh, I am an associate professor at the University of Copenhagen. So, um, I work a lot on a, a double helix that uh, we know as DNA, and uh, with age, we uh, accumulate damage to our DNA. This is uh, here shown in, in mice, that with age you get more of these markers of DNA damage, gamma H2AX. Um, and DNA damage is also associated with, um, with diseases of aging. So in Alzheimer's disease and in mild cognitive impairment, you see more uh, DNA damage in the brain of these patients. I also just want to highlight that uh, Leon Peshkin didn't mention DNA damage as part of the, the hot topics right now, so that makes me very unique, I feel. Um, we also know that, that other markers of DNA damage, so an activation of the DNA damage response by, this, uh, by an enzyme called pol-ADB ribose polymerase, you can see that in, in, you also see that in the brains of Alzheimer's disease, but also, for example, you can measure it in the cerebrospinal fluid of, of patients with Parkinson's disease. Uh, and we know that mutations increase in, in neurons with age uh, in the brain. Uh, so a lot of the stuff that I've been working on has been uh, DNA repair in the context of premature aging diseases. Um, and uh, most of these diseases uh, are caused by defects in DNA repair. And so DNA repair is quite uh, complex. There's a number of different pathways that attempt to correct different chemical modifications to our DNA. And these are actually quite uh, evolutionarily conserved. So if you actually find these pathways even in yeast, and if you don't have DNA repair, you, life cannot uh, occur, actually. You even have them in bacteria. And so with age and uh, in for example, cellular senescence, you see uh, an accumulation of, of uh, DNA damage that seems to stick around. So it's DNA damage foci that are found in our nuclei that seems to be irreparable. Uh, and you actually only need, so this is a paper by, from Judith Campisi's lab, but we see the same in, in, uh, in our models of cellular senescence that you only need three lesions to actually drive cellular senescence. So if you think about this in the context of aging, and if cellular senescence is important in aging, then, um, and if these lesions are truly irreparable, that means that you sort of accumulate one lesion every 25 year. Um, if we think that we're living 75 years. Um, but at least they're enough to drive senescence. Um, we know that DNA damage, the DNA damage response, for example, driven by PARP1, can drive some of the, the features of aging. Uh, and we can do something about it. We can use inhibitors to sort of uh, inhibit the DNA damage response. We can also use uh, precursors to increase, um, uh, or to increase NAD levels and then rescue features of aging in the brain. And we can go in maybe using ketones and, and uh, attempt to correct a loss of acetyl-CoA that, that uh, you can see with age, but the point is that we're actually not doing anything about the DNA damage, the actual um, insult that's sort of driving this. So um, even though we can attenuate these features of aging, uh, we cannot really fully rescue the phenotypes and we really can't do anything about the damage so far. So, this is the challenge. How can we fix the blueprint? How can we identify the damage and how can we do something about it? Thank you very much. You have so much to have questions. I love it. Well, that was very short. All right. Question, comment. Well, is there anything that's been done so far that? I mean, so this is a, a major issue because it's, it's an extremely difficult thing to actually address because it's, th these lesions are so rare, right? So we don't really know actually how to characterize them. Um, how do you know they're in the first place? Well, we can, 
be, because we can see the DNA damage foci, right? So we can see immunohistochemistry with immunohistochemistry that in, in cells and tissues, you get these points of DNA damage. And we know that if you inhibit those or inhibit the DNA damage response driven by those points, then you can attenuate some features of aging. So, um, so we know that there, but we actually don't know what it is. And even if it's a, we actually don't even know if it's really is DNA damage or if it's a chromatin modification or some side of, some sort of hybrid between DNA damage and protein. Just a quick question: Are you talking about somatic mutations, or is that some chemical modifications to the DNA? Not so much mutations. The mutations do increase, but I think um, there's some work showing that it's actually the DNA damage response that's probably driving the... Uh, I think mutations is more important in cancer development, and whereas the activation of the DNA damage response is important for cellular senescence or loss of stem cells and cell death with aging. Yeah, what well you said about DNA mutations every 25 years, that's an interesting thought experiment. So that got me thinking further. If you actually tracked it, would it ever would it really be every twenty five years, or would it be like this exponential increase, or would it be the deep? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I I, um, I think it's actually more linear than the exponential increase which you otherwise see. But I think the the um, you know the DNA damage response is something that amplifies the signal, which means that you get more and more signal the more lesions you have. Could there be some uh, potential solution in like the CRISPR space by chance? Or? Yeah, so you can think about you know having enzymes that go in then and repair the damage. Uh, we, we have thought about that also actually, but the CRISPR is you know targeted. You have a guide RNA that targets the enzymes somewhere, right? So you you don't. There's probably not a sequence specificity to the. DNA damage, although it's been reported to be maybe more telomeric, but I, I'm not completely agreeing with that. But uh, so, so the specificity is an issue with the CRISPR system if we want to go in and, and use that. Okay, yeah, over there. Awesome. Uh, is there a tissue distribution to these lesions? Uh, do some tissues accumulate them at a different rate? Do you know when, is it the cell cycle? Is it a couple of the division and what's wrong? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. So, um, I mean, it's interesting. So in the testes, for example, you, s you have rapid cell divisions. Even though you have rapid cell divisions, you get, these, you get more of these markers, the DNA damage markers. Um, and this is uh, strange to explain, I think. We know that in... Um, we know that in... in in some diseases, mutational spectrum can, you know, drive it more towards uh, cancer development, um, and this is seen in the in the gut. Um, but the tissue distribution is not well understood, actually, either. That's a good point. Is it reduced acetylcholine also one of the beneficial effects of CR? Uh, I I think that's maybe contested um, because when you fast, you get uh, increase in ketone body secretion, and that will be converted into acetyl-CoA. So I'm not, I'm not completely agreeing with that. We have a paper and review about this. That's a okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right.